This episode is brought to you by CuriosityStream, a streaming service that offers over 2,000 documentaries and nonfiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers. Sign up using the link and promo code below to start a 31-day trial absolutely free. Let's get this out of the way right up front. In this episode, I'm going to say some things that will sound pretty critical of capitalism. If that bothers you, feel free to pause the video and come back with your Pitchfork and Econ 101 textbook. We'll be here when you get back. That being said, this is not a video that will bash or even mention specific politicians, parties, or political stances. It's just a critical look at some of the mechanisms of capitalism. With that out of the way, let's talk about the beautiful American free market. Here in the States, if you have money, you have access to an unbelievable range of products. Everything from the basic necessities like food and water, packed in copious amounts of plastic of course, to luxuries like battery phone cases, talking wiretaps, decorative ladders, dog beer, oddly specific t-shirts, and $2,700 pizzas. If it'll generate a profit, it's a safe bet that some company will manufacture that product. But making the product is only part of the process. The company then has to find buyers for that product. They do this in a number of ways. Some companies will invest heavily in television ads, usually targeting an older demographic or their young children. Others buy targeted ads on the internet, narrowing their scope to people that have previously expressed interest in similar items. More recently, we've seen companies like Gillette and Nike artificially sparking viral marketing campaigns, as explained in the excellent H. Bomber Guy video, Woke Brands. But beyond simply reaching their intended audience, the brand then has to convince the would-be customer to actually buy their product, a task which seems to be getting more difficult for traditional businesses. As the spending population shifts more into millennial and Gen Z territory, corporations have suddenly found themselves faced with buyers who don't just want a good product, but one that's ethically and sustainably sourced. It's not enough that a car has a nice interior anymore. It has to offer leather alternative seats, or some other comfortable material that doesn't require the exploitation of animals. Take Tesla or Audi, for example. Tesla now offers vegan-friendly interiors on their line of cars, and the upcoming Audi e-tron will have seats upholstered entirely from recycled fishing nets. The source of the material, or food, or labor all has to meet the more ethical standard of these younger buyers, placing large companies in quite a predicament. A lot of existing corporations rely on highly exploitative labor, often outsourcing to other countries where they can pay workers a wage that would be unthinkable in the US, or even employ young children in sweatshops. With this new, more intense scrutiny from consumers, brands have had to adapt. Enter Whole Foods, or more specifically, its co-founder, John Mackey. Mackey is your run-of-the-mill business type, with one exception. He's the man with the proposed solution to the ethical brand dilemma. In 2013, Mackey and Raj Sisodia, chairman of a nonprofit called Conscious Capitalism Inc., published a book aptly titled Conscious Capitalism, in which the organic asparagus monger passionately decries high corporate tax rates, asserts that all federal regulations should have a sunset provision, and postulates with teary eyes that if CEOs would just allow their indentured servants more humane bathroom breaks, the government could be satisfied and leave businesses to operate in peace. The interesting and dangerous part about the book is that, on the surface, Mackey's arguments sound reasonable. Workers should get a decent wage and benefits. He's proud to sell healthier, more sustainably produced foods. More CEOs should take an ethical stance on production. These are all good things, and just about everybody would agree with them. The problem, however, is that this vision of conscious capitalism doesn't really jive with the actual, real-life capitalist economy we have today. The truth of the matter is that as soon as this business model is no longer profitable, it'll change in a heartbeat. The only reason Mackey has adopted this style of corporate governance is because he knows his consumer base will applaud it. In his book, Mackey writes, We need a richer and more ethically compelling narrative to demonstrate to a skeptical world the truth, beauty, goodness, and heroism of free enterprise capitalism. That's a fascinating statement because literally everyone would agree with it up until those last three words. There's nothing inherently good, and certainly nothing heroic, about free enterprise capitalism. In fact, quite the opposite. Free market capitalism exists to do one thing, maximize profit. If a new business initiative or program doesn't check that box, it's incompatible with Mackey's vision of pure, unfettered capitalism. The idea that the market will decide what's produced and in the exact right ratio is absurd. If there's a demand for a product but it's not profitable, or even simply not profitable enough, it will not be produced. Consider new, more effective antibiotics, for example. You would think that better medicine would take precedence over the production of older, less effective versions. In an ethical system, that would be the case. But under capitalism, we keep producing the same old drugs that often fail to do their job. Why? Because we know they're profitable. 
In systems where profit is not the primary motivator, new and more advanced drugs, often referred to as NMEs or new molecular entities, are often given a P rating for priority, meaning because of their importance, they'll be allocated more funding and labor to get them produced and into the hands of hospitals and pharmacies more quickly. In places like the United States, where profit is the sole motivator, so-called Me Too drugs, that is, existing drugs with slightly altered formulas, are heavily favored because they're much cheaper to produce, and therefore net a higher profit. This is why we have to be so wary of the notion of conscious capitalism. It's a misnomer. Truly conscious capitalism, a system that actually desires the best for its workers, consumers, and the world, would welcome government regulation to help ensure a complete lack of exploitation, whether of labor or of resources. This is in direct contrast with how Mackey envisions the conscious capitalist movement. He wants less government oversight, which would allow him to abuse tax loopholes, exploit foreign workers, and damage the environment. He compares unions to herpes for corporations, and works hard to undermine his employees' ability to collectively bargain. He cites a Koch-founded study that denies America's impact on climate change, going on to say climate change is, quote, perfectly natural and not necessarily bad. In short, he's trying to sell you on an idea that is fundamentally incompatible with reality, and he might just get away with it because it's wrapped up in ethical do-goodery and tied with a bow of American moral values. In H. Bomber Guy's video on woke brands, he makes an important point. The values espoused in the viral ad campaigns from brands like Nike and Gillette are good, decent values that most people would agree with. Don't harass people. Don't bully your peers. It's all stuff that your parents taught you growing up. But these companies are only adopting that good Samaritan persona to sell you a product. Whether or not their latest commercial draws some attention to very real societal issues, their bottom line is your dollar. They want you to buy their stuff. It's exactly the same with this notion of conscious capitalism, but it's even more insidious. Mackey and others like him want to sell you on the very idea of a benevolent free market, one that exploits neither labor, nor consumer, nor the environment. The problem is, no matter how flowery, heartfelt, and patriotic he seems, Mackey is selling a product that's dead on arrival, a vision of capitalism that does not and cannot exist simply based on the prime drivers of the system. So we need to be aware of powerful entities trying to insinuate that they're looking out for the good of the common man. Because if we dig a little deeper, it's never hard to find out that's actually not the case. If you'd like to learn more about John Mackey and his conscious capitalist movement, I highly recommend you check out CuriosityStream's documentary on the subject. It's a quick watch and really helps you understand how appealing some of Mackey's claims can be when taken at face value. CuriosityStream is a subscription streaming service that offers tons of great nonfiction content aimed at people on a lifelong quest to learn, explore, and understand. They've got over 2,000 documentaries from some of the best filmmakers in the game, and they've got a bunch of material on social issues, which are some of my favorites. Their catalog also includes content on science, nature, astronomy, technology, and lifestyle. Unlimited access starts at just $2.99 a month. And as a special offer just for you guys, you can get a 31-day free trial by following the link below and using the code SECONDTHOUGHT during signup. CuriosityStream is available on all sorts of platforms, including the web app, Roku, Android, Xbox One, Smart TVs, iOS, Chromecast, Amazon Fire, Kindle, and Apple TV. So wherever you are, you'll always have access to great, interesting content. Give CuriosityStream a shot and sign up for your 31-day free trial by visiting curiositystream.com secondthought and using the code secondthought.